Well, we're four weeks left into the 2019 NFL season. My God, it still feels like yesterday was just a kickoff game for crying out loud. But we're now four weeks in. It's now time for my week 14 picks. Last week, oh God, I went 9-7. Oh, I, went, I was so lucky that the um 4 p.m. games, Sunday night, Monday night, went my way. Because, oh God, the 1 p.m. games were a bloodbath. And I went 2-1 and one on Thanksgiving. Didn't help much so ever. Oh, God, F like, free another week in a row having a terrible year. That's pretty I mean, terrible week. That's pretty bad. And here's the playoff stands at the season end of the day. In the AFC, it's the Ravens and Patriots with the buys, with the Steelers at the Texans and Bills at the Chiefs. And the NFC, it's the Saints and Seahawks with the buys, with the Vikings at the Packers and the 49ers at the Cowboys. And my Super Bowl pick remains the same, the Ravens and the Cowboys. I mean, the Cowboys, the Ravens and Saints, I mean to say, just like I picked last year. So now, let's get into my Week 14 picks and we'll talk about a lot of playoff clinching and elimination sales because if everything goes their way this week, seven of the teams can make a playoff berth this week. So let's get into it. So we start off with Thursday night with two teams trying to get back over 500. They've had a disappointing year, to say the least, as the Cowboys are at the Bears for the first time since 2014. And funny enough, Last time they went here in 2014, that was Sunday, I mean, Thursday night too. It's been um, a primetime game multiple years since they've been there. Jeez. As the Cowboys, oh boy, they've lost two in a row now. And they got destroyed by the Bills on Thanksgiving. That was absolutely embarrassing. And, it's, and of course, Jerry Jones, being a senile old man he is, won't let go of his puppet Jason Garrett. <laughs> oh my God. And then the Bears, they beat the Lions. They won two in a row now. They're back at 500, but the season is. Unless they make one hell of a comeback or someone in the NFC North like the Packers or Vikings or someone has an epic collapse, it's going to be very difficult for them to make the playoffs. But hey, they're still in it. And even if they lose and the Vikings and Packers all win this week, they still would technically be in since they still have to be. They could still get if they win out and then the Vikings lose out, perhaps. So they're still in even with a loss. As this game could probably go either way, but I really don't trust either teams. It's just who do I trust less? And I trust the Cowboys less right now. Lost two in a row on the road now. I'm picking the Bears for this, but I guess I won't be surprised either if the Cowboys get it. And then we get to our 1 p.m. games. Start off with the Colts at the Buccaneers for the first time since 2011. How about that? Finally not Monday night for once like the last two times. As the Buccaneers, if they lose and the Vikings win, they will be eliminated from the playoffs. So it's win or die here. As the Colts, oh God, nothing's going their way right now as they got blown out by the Titans last week. As the Buccaneers actually destroyed the, um, the Jaguars last week. Very impressive right there as they now beat me, matched their win total from last year, trying to get over that mark as it's going to be tough. Thankfully for the Colts, I heard Marlon Mack might hopefully be back this week. That's going to be interesting to see how this handles. But, of course, I still don't fully trust the Buccaneers. I think even though they've won two in a row and they've blown out the Falcons and Jaguars on the road, I'm still not fully trust on them. Even though the Colts are having injury problems of their own, I'm still picking the Colts for this one. And then it's the Dolphins at the Jets. And the Jets, if they lose or the Steelers or Titans win and them losing two, I think, they will be eliminated from the playoffs. As, of course, the Dolphins already were eliminated. As the Dolphins, wow, they beat the Eagles in an offensive showout, I mean shootout. So much for trying to get that number one overall pick. They're putting themselves way out of contention possibly for that right now. But hey, they're still trying to match that win total from last year. They're going to have to win out for that as the Jets try to avoid a fourth straight losing season since they already matched their win total from last week, I mean last year. And, ah! <laughs> you gave the Bengals their first win of the year. And it wasn't even a close one. You got destroyed by the Bengals. Oh, that was too funny. Oh, God, that was embarrassing. What happened to, like, that um incredible three weeks you had? Oh, jeez, that was embarrassing. But, of course, I mean, you also gave the Dolphins their first win of the year, too. So you're blowing everyone's l l winless seasons for crying out loud. You're a punching bag for them. But I'm still going to pick the Jets. But watch the Dolphins beat them again like they did earlier this year. And, of course, the Dolphins somehow always seem to humiliate the Jets when they visit them. And we get to our huge Sunday night I mean, Sunday game right here. That should have been Sunday night along with Ravens and Bills instead. As it's the 49ers at the Saints for the first time since 2014. As for the 49ers, 
if they win and the Rams lose later tonight, they will be in the playoffs for the first time since 2013. As the Saints also have already clinched the third seed, at least all wrapped up since the Cowboys can't beat them now. As the 49ers lost a close game to the Ravens, they fought hard, just couldn't get it in the end. And the Saints, of course, destroyed the Falcons on Thanksgiving, which got them back to the playoffs in the NFC South title for the third year in a row as they're trying to win out. Now, now they have home field advantage once again with the 49ers loss. They need a win here to secure it possibly and keep up with the Seahawks right now and the Packers, along with the 49ers still as well. Well, we saw the 49ers just barely edged it out against the best team in the AFC. Well, actually lost, but it was still a hard-fought game on the road. Now, I would say statistically, maybe overall, the Ravens are probably better than the Saints because the Saints statistically have not looked that good like they did the last two years. So, if anyways, this could probably be easier for the 49ers maybe than the Ravens were. So you can probably easily see maybe a 49ers win in this, perhaps. But I'm still going to pick the Saints for this. I'm still not fully sold on the 49ers, even though they did a very impressive job against the Ravens. But hey, we'll see what happens on Sunday, I guess. And as the Lions at the Vikings, as of course the Lions lost to the Bears on Thanksgiving to no one's surprise, even though they played hard. Of course, they're now eliminated from the playoffs again. And the Vikings trying to... To get a third straight win season, of course, no playoff appearance for them yet, even if they win and everything else goes their way. They got to wait till like the next week after this. I mean, what <laughs> what else is there to think of? This is going to be the Vikings. And as the Broncos at the Texans for the first time since 2013, as the Broncos try to avoid their third straight losing season, the Texans trying to get their um second straight win season. If the Broncos lose or the, um, I mean, and the Titans and Steelers win, they will be eliminated from the playoffs, so trying to avoid that. No playoff appearance yet for the Texans, as they're still just trying to get their first win of the year. Broncos, hey, um, Drew Locke's first start, and they actually won. Very impressive performance against the Chargers and the Texans. Although the score doesn't look like it, come on, man. Come on. They destroyed the Patriots. Matter of fact, I would say they destroyed the Patriots even worse than the Ravens beat them on Sunday night weeks ago. They actually beat them, I think, worse than the Ravens did. As that's not looking good for the Patriots, but we'll get to that later. Big, important game for them right now. As I'm going to pick the Texans for this one, but don't underestimate the Broncos either. Don't underestimate them. And then it's the Redskins at the Packers for the first time since 2013. And the Redskins, believe it or not, even though they're 3-9, and nine, they are still in the playoffs. They can still win the NFC East. But if they lose or the Cowboys win on first tonight... They will be eliminated. So they need to win out and they need the Cowboys and Eagles to lose out to have any shot still getting in the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Packers, if they win and the um, Bears and Rams lose, they might be in the playoffs for the first time since 2016. Not fully sure on that. But, of course, the Redskins actually put a number on the Pampers. That was very impressive. The Pampers imploded the way they did. And how about that? The Redskins now won two in a row. Although they're blowing their chances to get that number one overall pick right now. But, hey, I guess you're desperate to try and stay in the playoff race until the Cowboys maybe win tonight and then you'll be done for. As the Packers got their first win season since 2016. Destroy the Giants in the snow in East Rutherford as they're trying to get back to the playoffs. Who me kidding? I'm going to pick the Packers. I think it's kind of obvious. But, hey, don't underestimate the Redskins. The Panthers did that and look what happened to them. So I would not underestimate them if I were you, Packers. Especially since... You've lost to him two times now in a row. And as the Bengals at the Browns, as the Bengals finally got their first win of the year, beating the Jets, and they blew them out too. That was very impressive. And the Browns suffered a, clo I mean, a close loss to the Steelers. And unfortunately for the Browns, if they lose and the Titans win, they will be eliminated from the playoffs, cont continuing the longest drought in the league to 18 years now. So... If you want to stay in the playoffs, you got to win out, and you got to hope the Titans and Steelers begin to choke out. Or the Browns, too. I mean, Bills, too, as well, because then you can get the fifth seed still, possibly. <clears throat> but, yeah, you're definitely going to need to win this, too. I'm picking the Browns still for this, but, hey, I would not underestimate the Bengals if I were you. I mean, they just destroyed the Jets, got their first win of the year. 
don't run the rest of me in Browns, or you're going to be looking at me being on the couch in the playoffs. And then we get to our next game, which also should have been Sunday night too, as it's a big one, but I'm scared shitless because I know it's going to be a trap, as the Ravens are at the Bills for the first time since 2013. And if the Ravens win and the Steelers lose, the Ravens will be in the playoffs and clinch the AFC North for the second year in a row. And depending on if the Texans lose, they would at least guarantee them the third seed, which would be an improvement from last year's fourth seed. As the Ravens had a hard-fought game against the 49ers and held on for the win as eight wins in a row. This is the longest in franchise history now as they are one step closer to getting to the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Bills destroyed the Cowboys on Thanksgiving as they got their first win in season since 2017 and trying to win 10 games for the first time since 1999. They can, the Bills cannot get a playoff spot yet. Although they beat the Bills, they still got, you know, beat, they beat the Titans early in the year. Even if they win and the Titans and Steelers lose, they still got to worry about the Steelers next week. So win and then the Steelers and Titans both lose and then you beat the Steelers next week, you're in. But till then, no playoff appearance yet, even at 10 and three. Now, of course, this is going to be a trap game for the Ravens. Yeah, they're the best team in the AFC, if not one of the best teams in the league. But the Bills have always beaten the Ravens when they host them. And the Ravens always choke and always fail in the most spectacular ways when they visit them. I am not war I'm warning you, Ravens. Take the Bills seriously. You will easily lose if you don't. And that's coming from me. Who still who thinks you're the best team in one of the best teams in the league, if not definitely the best team in the AFC? Don't underestimate the Bills. But knowing you, you're probably going to, and that's why I'm gonna pick the Bills to win this. And as the Panthers at the Falcons, and if the Panthers lose and the Vikings win, they will be eliminated from the playoffs for the second year in a row. And of course. They fired Ron Riviera to my actual surprise. I mean, I wasn't expect. I was sure he was probably going to get fired this year the way the Panthers have been going. But four games left still. And they're still in the playoff race too, remember. If you're going to fire him, why not wait till the end of the year? And of course, he was, he pl he was the Panthers coach for almost eight years. Almost beat tying up John Fox for the longest tenured. And he still did have an overall good... um. Um, tenure with them, made he he revived them from their two and fourteen finish in two thousand ten, four playoff appearances, three NFC South titles, an NFC Championship in two thousand fifteen at Super Bowl appearance with that fifteen one record with the number one offense that year. So he did have, I would say, a good job with them. So I'm sure he might get a um coaching job again very soon. So, we'll see on that. And, of course, the Panthers got humiliated by the Redskins. How do you go up 14-0 and then you let the Redskins score? What was it, like, 29 unanswered points? Oh, God. That was terrible. And the Falcons, of course, eliminated. Although, they did try to put up an effort at the end against the Saints. They just choked in the end and they blew it. They sh did not show up at all. Wow. Hard to believe after that two games in a row where they were dominating everyone, they've now been blown out by the, in their division. Incredible. Oh boy, what's it gonna be? Well, the Pan the Falcons end their three game losing, no two game losing streak, or will the Panthers end their four game losing streak and try to stay in the playoff race? Because if I don't know if I said, but if they lose and the Vikings win, they will be eliminated. I'm picking the Falcons for this one. I just don't trust the Panthers right now. They're on a miss. They're on a, a slide, and now their head coach is gone, and usually that does not signal well. For the team when their coach is fired in the middle of the season. So I'm sure they're going to struggle badly in this game. And then we get to our 4 p.m. games. Starting off with the Chargers at the Jaguars for the first time since 2017. As the both teams, the, Jag, the um, Chargers are trying to avoid their first losing season since 2016. And the Jaguars are trying to avoid their second straight losing season. And the Chargers, if they lose and the Titans or Steelers win... They will be eliminated from the playoffs. The Jaguars, if they lose and the Titans and Steelers both win, they will be eliminated as well. So whoever loses this game is pretty much eliminated in most regards. As the Chargers, oh boy, they blew in the end there with the Broncos with that pass interference, although they really had no chance whatsoever in that game. And the Jaguars, Jesus Christ, you are 4-4. Four four. Now you've been blown out repeatedly over and over and over again. The Texans, Titans, Colts, now Buccaneers, 
all blew you out. And of course, now they're finally putting Gardner Minshew in, which he should have been the starter during after um, Folds came back. He should have never been kicked off. So now the Jaguars possibly have a chance to maybe make a comeback since he's played much better than Folks, I mean, Folds this year. I'm picking the Jaguars to win this one, but I wouldn't be surprised either if the Chargers get it. And then we get to a Porton game in the AFC wildcard, at least, as the Titans are at the Raiders for the first time since 2013, as the Titans, wow, 2-4, and four, Mariota benched, and now look at that, they're 7-5 and five now, they've won 5 of their last 6, and are right there in the playoff mix right now, what an incredible turnaround it was, they dominated the Colts last week, as the Raiders, oh my goodness, oh my god, 6-4, and four. now they got destroyed by the Chiefs and Raiders, oh my god, that was embarrassing, embarrassing implosion they've had these last two weeks and of course i think it's going to continue this week i'm picking the titans right now unless the raiders want to have a massive change and win this game i'm picking the titans and then we get to the big afc playoff I mean conference matchup as the chiefs are at the patriots for the third year in a row as the chiefs if they win and the raiders lose the chiefs will clinch the playoff spot and the nfc West for the fourth year in a row in their fifth straight playoff appearance. And, of course, the Patriots, if they win or the Steelers and Titans lose, I think, they will get into the playoffs, or if they win as well. As this is really big for all of them, as the Chiefs destroyed the Raiders last week. Big win for them, getting them positioned to get a, God, of like a seventh or eighth straight win season and clinch the NFC West again. And the Patriots, oh, boy, the Patriots, you know what? Even though they're 10-2... and two, they tied the five. There's a five-way tie, literally, for the best records in the league, and they have first-round bye at least. They're not in a really good spot right now. Think of it, guys. They got destroyed by the Ravens. They got destroyed by the Texans. If they lose to the Chiefs right now, now they're ten and three. Depending on what happens with Ravens at Bills, they could tie the Bills for the NFC East or begin to fall backwards even more. Because then if they lost again, the Patriots, I mean, the Chiefs and Texas lost, they could fall all the way down to the fourth seed, possibly. They've already lost two of their games against the other division leaders, and they have to play the next one coming up. They're in a really bad spot right here to have a tiebreaker possibly against them for all three teams, possibly. So yeah, you gotta watch out, Patriots, especially after we saw you got destroyed by Texans last week. And that's why this might sound crazy, but I'm actually going to pick the Chiefs for this one. Why? Because look how the Patriots have played ever since the Ravens destroyed them. Close games, defensive struggles, and Brady struggles. And what happens with Brady struggles? You need a strong defense to put pressure on him. And what do you need to beat him? You need a competent offense to score just enough to keep, keep ahead over the Patriots. Guess what? The Ravens had that offense. The Texans do too. And the Chiefs? Even though their offense is nowhere near as good as last year, it's still really good. And I think the Chiefs' offense is more incompetent enough to put up against the Patriots as long as their defense shuts down Brady. And I think they can do that. And that's why I'm actually going to pick the Chiefs to get this. And, of course, watch the Patriots actually show up and humiliate the Chiefs. And it's the Steelers at the Cardinals for the first time since 2011 as the Steelers beat the Browns in defensive struggle. And like I said, like I said, it doesn't matter how much the Steelers struggle they still always find a way to get on the verge of a non-losing season every time they struggle this always happens as the Cardinals got destroyed absolutely destroyed by the Rams and officially eliminated them from the playoffs and a second straight losing season as this is oh god I actually thought throughout the year this could actually be a trap game for the Steelers but the way they're playing right now and the way the Cardinals playing I'm picking the Steelers for this, but I won't be surprised either if the Cardinals pull it off. And then we get to Sunday night as it's a huge one in the NFC South, I mean NFC West, as the Seahawks are at the Rams. And the Seahawks, if they win here, if they beat the Rams, they will be in the playoffs for a second year in a row. The Rams, they won't be eliminated if they lost this game, but it's going to be very difficult for them to get into the playoffs if they lose this. So it's really crucial that they get this. As the Seahawks held off the Vikings just barely... Last time out, oh my god, first the Vikings were humiliating them, then the Seahawks humiliated them with all those the, uh, miscues on the Vikings and all that, and then the Vikings were making a comeback, but the Seahawks managed to hold on 
to get the win. And, of course, the Rams destroyed the Cardinals last week after that humiliating loss to the Ravens. Now the Seahawks haven't beaten the Rams down in L.A. since 2016. They've lost two in a row down there, and they've beaten them early in the year. So that's one win for them, but that was a close game, too. And remember, last bunch of years, these games between them have been pretty close. Especially down in L.A., they've always been pretty close, even when the Rams regularly beat them and all. So, although the Rams really played good last week, I'm actually going to pick the Seahawks for this. Even though the Seahawks have not been that impressive much either, I'm still not fully sold on the Rams. Yeah, you beat the Cardinals, but they're the, well, Cardinals. But when you play an actual much better team like the Seahawks, you're probably going to lose badly. So I'm picking the Seahawks for this, but I won't be surprised either if the Rams get it. And then we get to Monday night. Of course, I have no idea why they picked us, of course. I'm sure everyone else is wondering why. As the Giants are at the Eagles. And, of course, the Giants got destroyed by the Packers last week. As they now officially have the longest losing streak in the league. Eight in a row now. Of course, they were eliminated from the playoffs. And the Eagles... Oh, my God. It's so funny how you easily could be 8-4 and four right now. But, no. You choked it against the Patriots. You choked it against the Seahawks. And now... You choked it against the Dolphins. In a game where Carson Wentz was superb, you let the Dolphins put up, like, what, 500 yards of offense on you? Or 600 yards? Oh, where was that defense those two weeks against the Seahawks and Patriots? They should have easily won that game. But then again, they should have easily won the last two games as well. But, of course, the Eagles choked it. On the verge of getting their first non-win season since 2016, too. Of course, they still would be in the playoff race, even if they lose. But if they want to make any playoff run now, they pretty much are going to have to go through the NFC East. They still could get the one wildcard seed as long as the Vikings don't win another game. But it's not going to be easy for the Eagles to probably get back in, even though they're still right there. But I'm picking the Eagles for this. Oh, God. Oh, God. You can't choke this. Even though the Giants... Have had close games up in Philly these last bunch of years. They haven't won there since 2013, I believe it was. I would not underestimate them, Eagles, but they also have had close games against you, and you're struggling really badly. And I think Eli's going to be in this game, too. Maybe it's your chance to actually win and that free game losing streak and get back into playoff contention, but I'm picking the Eagles. So those are my picks for week, four, I mean week 14. I cannot wait for Cowboys at Bears tonight and all the other games and see who's getting into the playoffs and who will be eliminated. So see you guys next Thursday for my last Thursday too because then the last bunch of weeks are going to probably be like on Friday or Saturday for the last two weeks. So we can make my picks then.